What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another game. In this quick one, I'll be showing you how to optimize the day before. Obviously, there's a ton of server issues and things like that, so hopefully you find that this is a bit better at the time if you're watching this. It's probably going to take me quite a while to actually get in. Anyways, without further ado, this video is going to cover optimizing the game itself, but not Windows. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get the most out of your PC. So without further ado, let's fire up the game. Right, so in-game, I find my way to an open spot that looks pretty open and should give us a real good test of what kind of FPS and performance we're getting. Everything's left at pretty much the default all the way up on a 3080 Ti at 2K resolution. If I enable an FPS overlay, you'll see I'm currently sitting at around 85-ish FPS, which is surprisingly pretty good. So without further ado, let's get to optimizing the in-game options. I'll let escape, head across to settings, and we'll start on the video tab. I'll hide my overlay at the very top, screen resolution. This should absolutely be the native resolution of your display. In my case, it's 2K. For you, it could be 1080p, 4K, etc. Then screen mode should absolutely be set to full screen for the best performance. And below this, we have a ton of options for upscaling, etc. We have NVIDIA DLSS, FSR2, as well as a normal render scale if you'd like to change the resolution render scale without actually using any kind of upscaling, though I wouldn't really recommend this. You should either be using NVIDIA DLSS if you have an NVIDIA graphics card or AMD FSR2. You'll find different results with the different ones. For example, if I change DLSS, not to auto, but to quality, as this will give you more consistent performance and apply changes here, you should immediately see that our FPS jumps quite a bit, and that it does, we're now sitting at a solid 104 FPS, which is pretty good. The game hasn't changed too much visually. If we head back and instead disable DLSS, we should drop back down to 85, I think it was. Yeah, there we go. We're at the high 80s, 88-ish, and we'll instead now enable FSR2 to quality. Unfortunately, there isn't an ultra quality option, but you'll see similar performance gains with both of these. We're now setting at 115 on AMD FSR2, though the water is noticeably shimmery, so I'd prefer to use DLSS in this case. Usually, you'll set one of these to quality and pretty much forget about it. In my case, I'll be using DLSS and setting it to quality. The reason we don't want to use auto is that it may change while we're playing the game and make things look weird. Essentially, the more to the performance side you'll be pushing this, the more FPS you'll be getting, but the more weird visual artifacts and things you'll be noticing. So, quality is the best option you could choose here, and only lower it if you really need to. Then, DLSS frame generation can be used with DLSS if you have that enabled, and of course you have an RTX 40 series graphics card, or another one that supports it. In my case, I don't, otherwise you can enable this. It's not going to improve your input latency or how the game feels, it'll just fill in extra frames, allowing the game to look more smooth without actually feeling a ton more smooth. In a video reflex, you should absolutely enable this if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, set this to on if you'd like a latency decrease meaning that you interact with the game a lot faster and you see what happens a lot faster and if you have a really low powered cpu set this to on plus boosted in my case i'll just be leaving this on on as i have a powerful system with a powerful cpu and powerful gpu then looking further down vsync you should absolutely have this set to off unless you're getting screen tearing but the top of the bottom half of your monitor don't match up in which case set this to off scrolling down further we have tons of quality options that we'll get into now i'll apply my changes and as we can see the game in the background you'll immediately see what kind of impact each one of these options has which is great starting with texture quality this one really impacts your vram on your system and changing the option here shouldn't really give you any more fps unless you're already running out of vram for example i'm setting at 110 10-ish on fantastic and on low I'm sitting at around 110-ish. There's no difference to me, as I have tons of VRAM available. Set this to low if you have around 2 gigs of VRAM in your system. Set it to medium if you have around 4 gigs of VRAM. Around 6, set this to high. And anything above 6 gigs of VRAM, set this to fantastic and forget about it. Then, effects quality. Changing this from fantastic to low, we only gain a handful of FPS, though this is more a situational option. For the most part, you won't really know the difference between fantastic and and lower until there's explosions, particles, and things like that. If you find that you're dropping tons of frames in busy scenes or when there's tons happening, this is the option you should consider coming back to lower. Shadow quality surprisingly is set to low on default. If we set this to fantastic, we don't really lose many FPS at all. We maybe lost five or so, and the game should look dramatically better. For example, we'll look over here. This is fantastic shadows, and we're getting around 88-ish FPS. High shadows, around 89-ish. 
medium shadows 89 still, and finally low shadows around 91. There's not a huge change in performance, and as for how the game looks, I definitely recommend having this set to the higher end if you can. So for example, I'll definitely be setting this to possibly fantastic or maybe just high, but of course if you find that you're on a system that really struggles in terms of VRAM, this is an option you can come back and lower, as it should help increase performance the lower this option is. Shader quality, changing this from fantastic to low, we go from 98 FPS all the way up to around 107-ish, so there definitely was an improvement here. This is how the game looks on low, and cranking shaders all the way up, this is how it looks on fantastic. Not a huge difference, to be honest. As for performance, it definitely does have quite an impact, so in this case, I'd recommend setting this to medium and forgetting about it. You can drop it a bit lower if you so need. Scrolling down further, anti-aliasing is completely disabled if you're using any kind of upscaling, which makes sense, as it gets rid of jagged edges and blurs and things like that all automatically in the upscaling process. Post-processing quality has to do with the quality of the vignette around your screen, motion blur, depth of field, bloom, etc. And by lowering this option, you should see that all of these options are stepped down a little bit. For the most part, having this on low, the game looks pretty good and pretty clear. But if we crank this up to fantastic, I'm pretty sure it got a little bit blurrier in the distance, and you can definitely notice a red-blue split, chromatic aberration, on the extreme corners of the screen, such as on the trees in the far right and the trees in the far left. If we drop post-processing to low, this completely vanishes. Setting this to medium, chromatic aberration is still gone and the distance is still nice and clear. High, the distance is a little bit foggier and chromatic aberration has returned. Personally, I don't really mind this effect. Sometimes it does get a bit on my nerves. And for that reason, if you don't mind chromatic aberration, you should probably leave this on high, otherwise a bit higher. Otherwise, if you don't like chromatic aberration and want less blur in general, set this down to medium and the game should look a little bit more clean. Then, foliage quality on fantastic. We have 118-ish FPS. Dropping this to low, we jump all the way up to 120. Not a huge increase. And as for how foliage looks, there's not too much of a difference, to be honest. This is on low and cranking it all the way up. This is fantastic. There's obviously more grass and things like that. And it does look quite a bit better the higher this option is. So if you'd like how the game looks, where it's more populated like this with foliage, you should have this set to the higher options. However, sometimes having this set to the lower options should give you a small competitive advantage. For that reason, if you drop it to medium, you'll have quite a bit better visibility while still keeping the game looking as good as possible and dropping it to low, even better visibility yet. Personally, I'll be leaving this on medium. Then, view distance quality, leaving this on fantastic, we get 103-ish FPS. Dropping this to low, we get 107-ish. Not a huge difference, and for the most part, nothing's really faded away in the distance. Here's low, and here's fantastic. I assume this mainly has to do with players, buildings, and things like that. So for the most part, you can really leave this wherever, until you notice that you start chugging when distant cities and things like that start loading in. For the most part, this option shouldn't have too much effect in most scenes. Finally, reflection quality. If we change this from fantastic down to low, we move from around 120-ish FPS to, well, still 120. Nothing much has changed, but the water does look terrible now. Ranking it back up to fantastic, it looks great. I things still look pretty good. Medium, I think it's starting to get a little bit worse. And finally, low, most of the reflections have disappeared. So for the most part, I'd recommend having this option set to medium at the lowest, which is this. Otherwise, if you have tons of performance to spare, this is something you can raise up. If you find that you're dropping performance in busy scenes with tons of mirrors, windows, etc., this is an option you should come back and lower. But for the most part, this game is relatively well optimized, at least on modern hardware. I am pushing frames from a 3080 Ti at 2K, maybe not this game is quite demanding as is, but if you drop it down to 1080p, you should notice a huge increase in performance. The DLSS and AMD FSR 2 should do quite a bit of heavy lifting. For the most part, we've gone through most of the video options here, and we haven't really had to change all that much, except for texture quality, depending on how much VRAM you have, post-processing, depending if you like a motion blur, depth of field, and chromatic aberration, foliage quality, to give a slight competitive advantage, and finally, reflection quality for water and things like that. The rest of these don't have too much of an effect, except for maybe shadow quality in certain scenes with more objects. If we visit audio, there's not much to change here. Same on the game tab, and controls, there's nothing. The game options are a little bit limited, but for the most part, it is relatively well optimized, so there's not really that much that we have to do to get this game to run really well. Anyways, hopefully you found this video somewhat useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.
special thank you to my first ultimate supporter, KZ.